Good evening. Today we are going to see the different steps and theory of the footing. So footing, these footings are the structural members used to transfer the load from column to the soil. So we know load comes from slab to beam, beam to column, and this is the last structural element which transfer total load of the building to the soil. So whenever we will go for design of footing, we have to take care that load coming on soil should not be greater than its soil bearing capacity. Now, footings are broadly classified into two types, shallow foundation and deep foundation. We are interested with shallow foundations only. Shallow foundation, if depth to width ratio is less than five, then the footing is known as shallow foundation or shallow footing. Now in sub books, it is given less than three meters. In some books, it is given less than 10 feet. So different criteria are given in the different, different books. Some books are saying this is six. So some in some it is mentioned four. So let us, we will say it is value that is five. And if it is greater than five, then we are going to say it as a deep foundation. So we will see shallow foundation only. Then shallow foundation, these uh, the types of shallow foundation are given as below. So we have first isolated footing. These are generally provided under the individual columns. Means we have one column, and we are going to provide. Also draw the or draw these diagrams. We are going to provide these footing on this. So this is plan of the footing. So we are in this question. If you draw the elevation, then we are going to be in this fashion. We have this as column and then we have some offset to it and we have this as isolated footing. So you have to draw these diagrams also. So this is isolated footing. You can draw this plan below and then elevation on upper side. So we have this is first footing which is which is isolated footing and this isolated footing is preferred only for uh, single or we can say that is individual columns. Then we have combined footing. These are provided to support more than two columns. So uh, this we can draw if we will draw it, then we have this footing in this fashion. So we are going to provide two columns, two or more. Here I am showing two columns and that we are going to say as combined footing. So we have this. This may be trapezoidal or this may be rectangle. Our syllabus is related with rectangle only. So we have this will be rectangular footing. So we have this as one column and this as second column. So we have this is combined footing uh, which will be a, designed for two or more columns. Then we will go to the third footing. Uh, this third footing we have that is uh, strip or continuous. So it can be provided below wall. Or we can have if one of the column we have that is larger load than the second one. Then in that case we are going to provide this strip putting. So strip beam that is going to be used to design. To transfer the load of one column to the other. So this strip putting we are going to use when all one of the load is much higher than the other one. This uh, type of putting is provided or below the wall. We can have this continuous putting and then last we have mat foundations. So in this case, when bearing capacity of soil is very less and uh, isolated footing of the columns uh, are going to be overlap with each other. In that case, we are going to provide a slab type footing. So this footing we are going to provide co common for all the columns and that is known as your mat foundations. So we have different types of hollow foundation in this way. In deep foundation, actually we have pile foundation mainly uh, where we have depth is very large. Shallow foundations, we are going to be uh, in open conditions, whereas in deep foundations, we are in closed conditions. Then following steps we have to uh, follow in case of design of isolated footing. First, we have area required. So formula, we have area required as total load on footing 
upon SBC. So here we are going to say 1.1 of column load because here we are going to consider uh, self weight of footing as 10% of weight of column. And second, we have size of footing. Now in this size of footing, it is most important that the cantilever portion, whatever we are providing, CXX and CYY, this should be equal. Why we are going to be equal? Because if these are equal, then we are going to get bending moment along XX and bending moment along YY are uh, very close. And in that case, our footing becomes economical footing. So we have this size of footing. So we are going to say as B plus 2CYY, D plus 2CXX equal to AR. Now in this case, this is B width of column, D depth of column. And we are going to keep CXX equal to CYY. And due to that, when unknown is C only, and by using this equation, we are in position to calculate the value of BF and value of CF. So size of footing we can have from this, that is BF and LF. Then we have next step bending moment. So footing acts as cantilever beyond the face of the column. And now in this, so bearing pressure we are going to consider that is actual bearing pressure and this actual bearing pressure is always less than soil bearing capacity and that we are going to consider to determine the bending moment now how we will calculate this so we are going to calculate bending moment about y y axis so we, uh, that is at the face of the column we have w into this distance this is c x x axis so we are finding about y y axis, so distance is taken as cxx. So w into cxx square by 2, that is bending moment about this y, y axis. And then bending moment about xx axis, we are going to get w into cyy square by 2, because now we know these values, bf we know, lf we know. And by using this, we are in position to calculate the bending moment due to actual bearing pressure on footing. In knowing these bending moments, so we know now uh, bending moment uh, along xx, bending moment along yy, and knowing this bending moment, we are in position to calculate depth from bending moment. This is same as uh, as usual. Here, this is again most important. We are going to provide offset to the column that is 50 mm. Means we are in this way, and then we are going to provide this offset. Otherwise, to go for form work. Without offset, offset is very difficult, and therefore this is this offset is provided in design of footing. So this offset generally provided as 50 millimeters from face of the column. Then RU max we will calculate. So you can see this. So this is 50 mm, and from this we are in position to calculate value of depth from bending moment. Then we are going to find out re reinforcement along x direction. Here we are going to use muxx. Uh, formula we have same, only the change we have to consider depth that is dx. And in case of y direction, we are going to consider depth as dy. So remaining things we are as it is. So here actually we have b into dy. And by using this formula, we are going to find out astx ASTY and generally we are going to calculate number of bars in case of footing. So in some books, your spacing is given, but is always preferable to calculate number of bars. Now check depth for two-way shear. Now in this, we have to check depth for one-way shear and two-way shear. Now two-way shear, we are going to calculate that is capacity of this footing at a distance dy by two from face of the column. So actually this is from face of the column. So we are going to calculate from face of the column that is capacity of the footing and that should satisfy our requirement. So the depth uh, to, for two way shear, we have to consider critical section at a distance dy by two. How to calculate we will see in detail when we will go for the problems. Then check, check depth for one way shear. Now this we are going to calculate or critical section we are going to consider for one way shear that is at a distance dy from face of the column. So one way shear at dy from face of the column and two way shear at dy by two from face of the column. Then we have checked for bearing pressure. So we have clause number 
क्लॉज नंबर 34.4 नाउ हियर वी आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट एक्चुअल बेरिंग प्रेशर बट इन दिस वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू कंसीडर सेल्फ वेट ऑफ फुटिंग इन लास्ट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड विद सेल्फ ऑफ फुटिंग एंड हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डिवाइड इट बाय एरिया ऑफ कॉलम एंड दैट विल गिव्स मी एक्चुअल बेरिंग प्रेशर दैट इज ऑन कॉलम and then a1 we have bf into lf already we have calculated bf value we have calculated lf value and a1 you can see supporting area for bearing footing slope footing may be taken as the area of the lower base of the largest prostrum of a pyramid or cone contained wholly within the footing and having for its upper case the area actually loaded and having side slope on one vertical to two horizontal so we have one that is bf upon lf and second we have one vertical to um, two horizontal then we are going to get that value as 4 df so we have b plus 4 df and d plus 4 df and we are going to consider consider value uh, a1 upon a2 and that should be less than or equal to 2 and last step we have development length we are going to use this formula ld equal to 5 sigma s upon 4 tau bd and by using this formula we are going to check development length so these are the steps which we have to follow in design of foot <coughs> footing so now we will stop here only remaining part we will see in class so thank you